and that's I, you know, that's great. It's twice what it was before. It was 4K 30 frames per second, um, and this means that where we need the pixels stretched around for 360 panoramas, you can get twice the resolution. But the problem is, it's like it takes at least half again as much bitrate, not quite twice as much bitrate to double it, but it costs a lot more bits. And we're already skimping on bitrate quite a bit. When you look at the bitrate that you get from a Blu-ray, and that's for projection onto a 1080p screen sitting in front of you, and we're decoding 4K videos at lower bit rates, stretching it all the way around you with giant pixels out. So I'm not sure where that's going to end up. Uh, are people going to be willing to download gigs of content to get you know, a long form or even medium form uh, 360 entertainment at 4K 60 frames per second uh, encoding. Now, we've been doing the viewport dependent streaming with Facebook. And this is one of those things that for a lot of people, it works out just great. You look at that and it's up to a 4X quality improvement. Some people really notice that when you turn quickly, depending on your connection and the phase of the moon and whatever, you may have a fairly stale, uh, you know, blurry blue view that comes in that snaps back to a better one. I still think we've got a lot of room to improve that. We spent a lot of time on, on a custom protocol driving that and didn't get the success that I had hoped for with it. But I still think I'm not yet convinced that we're anywhere near uh, kind of maxing out what we can do with that. For streaming, that seems to be the only hope. It has to be this very focused direction. And we've gone through a lot of changes from pyramids to offset cube maps. Um, and there may still be different projections that wind up working out better. So I think I still have high hopes that we're gonna get a doubling or tripling of quality or total, total appreciated quality counting turning around on that. Uh, and that ties into the, the video streaming as a service uh, SDK stuff that's gonna be coming up to allow people to push 6K by 3K equal recs to the Facebook infrastructure, have them all transcoded to this and use that inside your own native applications. But there's some other interesting directions like the March Madness basketball application, instead of going with full 360 degrees, it went with 180 degree by 60 degree uh, cylinder. And that allowed them to take the same 4K video and draw it onto this much reduced pixel area so it got many times higher pixel fidelity for the same kind of 60 frames per second high quality motion. And I saw like one of the apps that I reviewed on Wednesday was taking good quality 180 degree, you know, 180 degree hemispheres and similarly getting a factor of two pixel quality over doing a full 360. I think there's still very good opportunities for doing things like this. Someone made the, you know, I thought kind of insightful comment about the different ways that you use 3D media where there's some things, like if you want to be in uh, the Taj Mahal or the pyramids or something, everything's equally valuable. You look around, you appreciate all the different directions. But probably the majority of content that people would like to create does have some degree of focusing. And there's a lot of options that you've got here. It could be just 180 degree camera, which then avoids the whole camera mess of how many cameras and what your stitching is and all of that. Or you could capture a full 360 and have lovely stuff sitting in your master file so you can you know, re-render uh, re it out at different yeah, yeah. 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 platforms. Yeah. But you might wind up using an offset cube map projection or something to give great quality to the people right in front of you or the people today. So one thing that's a big negative that came up this year is the first year of, uh, like with the Innovator Edition, I remember having a conversation with Felix and Paul guys and they were complaining about you would see a tiny little tick, like a dropped frame, about once a second. And I was like, I was impressed that they even noticed that. But the, the difference is that uh, they master everything at 60 frames per second, but the phones are playing out at like 59.2 or 3. It's not even the 59.99 uh, NTSC sort of thing. It's just phones are not exactly 60 frames per second. Uh, so what happens is it play the frames and then it would drop a frame there. Uh, I had always been saying that we should really fix this because 60 frames per second content is what makes things feel really fluid and you're there, and especially for sports content, uh, it's important. It's one of the things that makes it look better than a traditional video. Uh, so I finally sat down to at least go gather some real data recently, and I noticed some other things about some apps, just video having a lot of stars. I wasn't sure whether it was our streaming stuff or, uh, you know, or something more fundamental. But when I finally sat down and captured data logs really precisely about when the frame is on the screen, when it's being decoded, I expected to see a nice linear graph of it going up and having a little tick and then going up. But instead what I saw was 
for half a second, nice and smooth expected, and then a huge mess for the other half of a second. And this was completely re repeatable. It's most obvious at 60 frames per second video, but it's affecting everything, 30 and 24 frames per second as well. Uh, like a really obvious place that you can see this in the recent uh, Yellowstone video from Felix and Paul, there's a shot, a time-lapse shot of like clouds rushing by overhead. And you can watch anything in a 60 frames per second video going, it's going nice and smooth, smooth for half a second, then kind of juddery, and then smooth and then juddery. Now this is all a result of something that, uh, that changed in the way the video decode frames were released. And Android actually made a lot of improvements for traditional video display where in the old days, you would decode videos and just whatever frame is last decoded, it gets pitched to the, uh, to the compositor. And nowadays, you can have a specific release time assigned with